What's up, Browns fans? This is Luke from Ireland, and you're listening to the Dogs Podcast. Let's kick this thing off. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Dogs. Uh, we're always looking for more fan intros like Luke's from Ireland. Head to thedogspodcast.com to leave us a voicemail and get your intro on the show. Uh, we want to thank everybody for giving the, the dogs their most successful two weeks <laughs> in show history. Uh, we appreciate all the support. Um, we actually, I think our Curtis Weaver video at 17,000 views, which is completely mind-blowing. So whoever put it up on Reddit, God bless thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so again, thank you for all the support. Um, before we get into the episode, remember to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, go follow us on Twitter if you get a chance. We're getting close to 1,000 followers on there. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. You can also find us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Leave us a five-star review if you don't mind. Lastly, remember to head to the dogspodcast.com slash schedule to take our 2021 Browns record poll. You can go game by game and vote whether you think the Browns are going to win or lose. Do we have any updates on that this week? Yeah, we do. We've actually had a lot of people going and submitting their predictions for the record, which is phenomenal. Keep sending okay. them in. We love it. Right now, I do you guys remember what I said the record was last week? 14-3 uh, or 12-5. 14-3. and five. Well, we are, the fans now have us at 15-2. and two. Oh, boy. 15 and 2. So they got us beating wow. the Chargers now? They have us beating the Chargers. We convinced them. We, we, we made a compelling so argument. So far, we're week. losing week one against Kansas City and game one against Baltimore. And that's that's it. it. Browns fans are hype right now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and I, I, I think we're going to take the credit for flipping that. We, we made a compelling argument last week for why the Chargers shouldn't have been one of those losses. Yeah, yeah, I think we did. I think we did. But yeah, so please keep keep sending in your uh, predictions at dogspodcast.com slash schedule. Yep, we're going to keep that up all the way through training camp. So get them in, and then when we break down the uh, the season game by game, uh, closer to the start of the regular season, we'll have uh, some of that sweet, sweet data. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Father's Day is just around the corner. You probably need a gift for a hairy dad. Make your dad proud this year and get him and yourself the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, at manscaped.com. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and just launched their lawnmower 4.0. Imagine surprising your dad with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized body hair trimmer that will that says your balls will thank you. I know if your dad's <laughs> balls are as hairy as my dad's balls, he's going to need it. <laughs> it's very, that makes me very nervous. Yeah. It's a what picture is- I wanted in my head. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, Dad. Uh, <laughs> their fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. You might ask, how's the lawnmower 4.0 different from other trimmers? Well, this upgraded trimmer includes a multifunction on-off switch that can engage a travel lock. This is a great feature if your father or yourself do a lot of traveling. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Uh, you can shave your balls in the dark, which is cool. I don't. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> lawn- you're feeling a little risky. You know? Yeah, if you like to live on the, the uh, dangerous side. Uh, lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes 1 through 4. There's wireless charging. Uh, it's waterproof. You can uh, use it in the shower. Then you can also pick up on manscaped.com the weed whacker for your nose. They got deodorant, boxers, t-shirts. Cologne. Cologne. Yeah, get your dad or, you know, your friends or dads. Get them some cologne. Yeah. I'm a dad, guys. All right. Yeah, Justin's excited. <laughs> I'm the only one at the table that's a dad, so hey, help, yeah. help a brother out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so get 20% off plus free shipping with code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with promo code DOGS. This year, show your original home some love with Manscaped. All right. Okay, so we're going to move into our episode, which for you guys listening and watching, we're making up on the fly. <laughs> uh, we had an episode planned today. We, we had a very special guest lined up. Um, he's having some technical issues. We we're running out of time. So we, we we're going to reschedule that, and we just kind of, we're going to wing it. 
Yeah, so. we got some other. I mean, there's always plenty of stuff to talk about when it comes always. to the Browns, NFL. This is what makes oh, yeah. us professionals. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, we're professionals. Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest things that I think kind of kick off here is um, just came across the newswire. Julio Jones has been traded to Tennessee Titans for a at least a second round pick is what they're saying. I know the details aren't really out. The there details yet. are out. I just got an alert okay. and I was holding it up here just so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't forget. So the tech, all right, let me just make sure I read this right. They're trading Julio Jones to the Titans in exchange. So if Atlanta is getting a second round pick, that is not the right alert. <laughs> That's all right. We're doing a great job on this. Hey, we're winging it. We are winging it. Where's that alert? The at? wife just asked me what we were going to do, and I said, we're just... Who knows? We just <laughs> it, right. So, I mean, while Josh is looking for that, obviously, yeah. Julio yeah. won it out. I yep. think that was made clear. You know, Shannon Sharp, thanks for calling him on live TV. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, he's uh, he's probably in some <laughs> in some uh, trouble there at Fox. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he, good. he good called, TV. you know, Julio pretty much said, hey, I, I'm, I'm not going to be here. That he won it out. Um he kind of, in the last couple of years, isn't that guy anymore in Atlanta. So it was kind of like the writing was on the wall. It was just, when was the deal going to be made here before the season? You got the details? I do. I do. I have it now. So Atlanta gets a 2022 second round pick and then a fourth round pick in 2023. Okay. okay. And Tennessee gets Julio Jones in a 2023 six. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, if you would have told us a couple of years ago that this is what Julio was going to go for, I think everybody would have called you crazy. That he I mean, was going to go for a second round pick. <laughs> I know we didn't need him, but if that's all it took to get him, should we have been in the running? I mean, Julio, I think when he's healthy, he's still a dog on the field. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a mismatch nightmare because not only does he still have some speed, he's huge. Yeah. You know, he's not just like a little guy who's like, okay, lost his speed and he's not going to be able to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. This guy's going to be able to go up high point a ball over almost any cornerback in the league. Yep. Yeah. Um, From now and you don't worry about drops. Players. Yeah, Julio. no, you know, it's just never been a big thing, of, you know, that anyone had to worry about in his game. Right. So now and then what's interesting about the Titans, they were one of the most popular teams in play for him to go to. He goes there now with uh, fellow wide receiver, A.J. Brown, who's yeah. become an elite wide receiver in the last three seasons. Mm -hmm. um, you get Ryan Tannehill, who's a respectable quarterback in the NFL. And then, oh, hey, you have Derrick Henry as a running back. What was the last running back that? Julio Jones played with that was the bell cow and that was the focal point of the offense. I mean, you're going to have to put a bunch of guys in the box to stop Derrick Henry. That leaves Julio Jones and AJ Brown out there by themselves. Who are you double team in there? You, know, you can't double team either one of those guys. Either one of those guys can win a double team. Right. Yeah. I mean, their offense took a big step up. Justin and I were talking out on the way up. It's like um, their offense has a chance. To, I mean, it basically, if their defense is good and Ryan Tannehill continues to play the way he has the last couple of years, I mean, they're going to be legit. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, like Vrabel as a coach, you know, he's kind of helped turn things around down there. And I think that this team is, they're trying, they, I think they figured out that they had to have some more weapons to score. They lost Corey Davis yeah. in free agency. So yeah. they had to have, their defense is, has, you know, for the last, probably last five, six years has been good. Their defense. Last year kind of sucked. Last year, okay, so last year it was a little bit down. The year that they beat us in the opener, I mean, defense was like their focal point. Yep. And then they just would run Derrick Henry for 200 yards, and then you'd have to worry about A.J. Brown. That was yep. kind of, that was it. And so now you get Julio Jones. It's just another top talented weapon to try to stop. Well, in, in the Titans, their pass rush, they didn't have a pass rush at all last year. And then they signed Bud Dupree. Right. So they improved their pass rush. Um, well, and last year they took the – and hopefully it works out for us, but they were the, the team that signed Jadavion Clowney, and they didn't get out of Clowney what everybody no. was expecting mm -hmm. to yeah. get. So we're, we're going to see. I think the Titans are going to be – they're going to be really good. I don't think that they have a lot of obstacles either to get to the playoffs. We were oh, talking I mean, to, like the Colts. That's, that's it. The yeah, Colts. and think about, I mean, Urban Meyer's probably like, man, Julio comes to my division my right. first year. Now i got to worry about this guy. I already had to worry about Derrick Henry, A.J. Yeah. Brown. Now i got Julio to worry about yeah. in the division. Houston, Houston's a dumpster fire. They're actively... <laughs> Tyrod's excited to start. I, I bet. I, <laughs> I, I bet. I mean... Stay away, stay away from those <laughs> medical, medical staff. Yeah. 
And then, you know, obviously Jacksonville is building something. Yes. Oh, they're building a huge facility, if that's yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they're building a big facility down there for Urban Meyer. I mean, that was yeah. probably one of the things. Urban went down there and, like, was interviewing for the job, and he's like, you guys don't have an indoor practice facility? There's no way. Oh, we'll build you one. Yeah, we'll take care of it. <laughs> so so. I guess, so that, that's happening down in Jacksonville. But, yes, they are building, a, I think, a team for the next – Maybe not this year right away, but with yeah, a couple years. They're rookies. They're going to be good. Yeah. I mean, is Urban Meyer going to be a good coach? Well, see, we were, we were going to ask was, our guests that today. Yeah. I mean, great, I, great recruiter. I liked. I liked how in the in the show outline that you said, is he going to be Chip Kelly or is he going to be Pete Carroll? <laughs> you know, and <laughs> what, which one are you going to get? And I, it'll be interesting. I don't think anybody really knows because he's been away from the game now for how many? Three, four years? Is that how many that I think it's at least three. been there? Um, it'll be interesting to see Here's, how he does in the NFL because it doesn't always work out. Even the best coaches sometimes don't work uh, out. Nick Saban. Yeah. Here, here's my take on Urban Meyer. Is even throughout his college career, he's always been a great program builder, but he's never been a great program sustainer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Flor- Florida, great. And then by the time he left, they were clearly on the way back down. Ohio State was great at first. And then, I mean, you could argue Ryan Day's been better his first couple of years, Since, and Urban yeah. Meyer and was his last. Maybe two years. that's the long term plan in Jacksonville: is bring Urban in, get, get this thing started. built, and then move on to somebody who can sustain it. I don't know, but I think he's getting a lot of unfair flack for the couple things that people keep harping on him about, which is the Tebow signing, and then saying that Travis Etienne is going to play wide receiver in minicamp. It's like, so what? If I was a Jacksonville yeah. fan, I, I'd be you, more worried about his health. I watched yeah. Urban Meyer. Yeah literally on his knees for the last two years that he was at Ohio state. And he's like, Oh, everything's good. I'm taking medicine that, you know, makes uh, that sack thing. Here's small. C- kind of a, <laughs> in my brain, kind right. of a bold take. Is there, is there more pressure at Ohio state or Jacksonville Jaguars? Oh, I think there's by far more pressure at Jacksonville. I think I, I think the third I team in a state. Oh. Yeah. But I think they're that all, they've always been crap. I mean, when, when Meyer I first for, came to Ohio state, I think the pressure was high because, correct me if I'm wrong, we had just come off the Luke Fickle yes. interim, right? The little bridge yeah. season, and uh, we couldn't make the playoffs, but we went undefeated that first year Urban came in. So I I would argue that there Ohio State— There was no State, playoffs his first year. Or, I'm sorry, we couldn't make a bowl game. Yeah. yeah. You're playing in Jim Trussell's Here, shadow. Here's, yeah. here's my, my reasoning saying the pressure is higher at Ohio State than it is at Jacksonville, Okay. At Ohio State, it's championship or bust every year. Right. At True. Jacksonville, you, they're literally irrelevant every they, year. They win eight uh, games this year, and it's a huge success. <laughs> yes. Two years Six ago, they were right there, but then, I mean, that was built on their defense. You know what I mean? And, I mean, okay, so, yeah, they had that good year, yeah. but in my life, that I mean, that's basically been it. What, what about, like, yeah. 95 with Mark Brunel, and uh, those were good years. They knocked Denver out, John Elway out. Like, I, I kind of, when the Browns left, I kind of liked Jacksonville a lot because they were kind of you know a newer yeah. team. So 25, 30 years ago, yeah, yeah, but, it was a while. I mean, there, there's a, if he comes in and sucks in Jacksonville, everybody's going to be like, "Well, we saw that coming." Yeah, I <laughs> you think know what I mean. I so just, I just yeah. I just don't see him having that much pressure. I don't I I don't know if it's a pressure as much on like the team that they you know that he's supposed to turn this team around. I think it might be just the pressure of this is kind of his end of his legacy. What do you want your what do you you know, do you have that type of a pressure of, okay, I'm, I can either turn this thing around and everybody's gonna look at me as, you know, one of the greatest program builders, which they do in college, but now I was able to do it in the NFL and I've been successful here. You know, what kind of legacy that does that leave behind or is it man or is he just that Next college coach that couldn't cut it in the NFL. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, does it really hurt his legacy if he comes in here and goes two years and wins eight games in two years and they fire him? Nobody's talking about Nick Saban's legacy being tainted, and he was dog crap in the. But NFL. I think yeah. that it helped Nick Saban though that he was a, he went back to college. I don't think I see Urban going back to college. After this is this. it. Nick Nick was in college, went to the NFL, went back, and he's been a powerhouse ever since yeah. where urban i think that that is just might be like his last thing is here and he couldn't and he's going to go out that way if he goes out like he did at ohio state everybody you know nobody talks bad about him at all he comes back here well you, you know that'll be the last reminder last thing that you'll think of is oh he didn't make it in jacksonville yeah and i think that i i think that he could have some success at least early on with the players on that team because you know they're young 
It's a young team. They got a lot of young guys. They don't have like these big, you know, I've been in the league for seven, eight years. I'm a superstar veteran kind of players or personalities. They don't have the head cases or anything in that locker room where I think that would, I mean, think about these coaches that came in to coach the Browns year after year. And it was just that constant culture of we suck and we're signing guys just, it's, it's kind of like their last stop before they retire. They're dogging on the field. They don't want to play. I mean, it was just bad culture altogether, yep. but they don't have that right now in Jacksonville. And I think he, to be able to establish that team this year and next year, I think it's set up for him to have success. Yeah, I agree with that. That's yeah. fair. I mean, I, I mean, Jacksonville, you got, if there's any fans, you guys got a lot of things to look forward to. Even oh, yeah. if Urban doesn't work out. And it, I mean, you're still going to have Trevor Lawrence for the next five, six years. You got Travis Etienne. You have James Robinson that I think a lot of people forget about yeah. mm-hmm. of like when they came out and said that Etienne might have to play some at wide receiver. That's because you want to try to get both those guys on the field yeah. as much as you can. When they made that pick, I was very confused because I was like, man, and obviously Etienne is a stud. And he's great, but yeah, you already I, had that guy. You right. already had the running back. Right. And the Tebow thing, um, I think that yeah, was it Urban maybe looking out for Tebow over drinks, you know, at their, you know, in their backyard barbecue because their neighbors. It. Tim, come on, to, I'll you give know. you a shot. And, but hey, I'll tell you, from what you hear, it seems like he's got like a 50-50 chance of making the team. You look at their tight end room. I mean, I know I was talking to Blake the other day about it, and there was nobody. I mean, I think O'Shaughnessy, and there was, a, there was one other name um, that was on there that we we're like, who? <laughs> so... <laughs> Tebow has a chance to, you know, he's selling jerseys. You know, he's going to be, a, you know, they're probably going to be hard knocks because of oh, everything sure. going on. Yeah. So as the team, you're like, hey, do we give this guy a roster spot? Who cares if he's our third string tight end and plays special teams or has to throw a block on a punt? Yeah. The people will be like, well, he's taking the spot. He, he's taking the spot of what your sixth or seventh corner. He's probably never going to see the field anyways. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, well, and he's a good, he's just that good, like mentor persona to have in the locker room with Trevor Lawrence, even if he's only here for this period of the summer and they cut him before, you know, in the preseason, whatever, they got him in there whenever Trevor Lawrence came in and rookie minicamp and these OTAs, that's got to be a huge, because I've, I've seen the comments Trevor's made about Tebow and like, just love having him in the locker room with me, love him being around. So, and here's my thing. If, if, if you're complaining because Tim Tebow is taking the spot from somebody who's been working for this his whole life, well then beat out Tim Tebow. Right. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like he's not, if he makes the rosters, cause he was better than you. Mm-hmm. Right. So tough. Yeah. And he, and he had the, and talking about Tebow, he left because, you know, everybody's saying that he couldn't play the quarterback position he couldn't. And yes, there were definitely things that he struggled at, at being a quarterback. But I think that he just didn't play the quarterback position. Like everybody wanted a quarterback to be, I mean, the guy took Denver, turned them around Took him to the playoffs, knocked the Steelers out. Yep. Uh, he's got an eight and six record as a starting quarterback, uh, with seventeen to nine interceptions, seventeen touchdowns isn't great, but uh, I just I don't think that he got. He was just knocked about everything off the field and that he couldn't yeah. be a quarterback. He just wasn't the quarterback everybody wanted. He wasn't Patrick Mahomes, but he never said that he was going to be Patrick Mahomes. You know who he was? He's just slower, Lamar Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's they, neither one of them can throw, yeah. and they can both run. <laughs> now, obviously, Lamar is more electric when he when he runs, and Tebow is more of like a bruiser. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's they were kind of used in the same way, especially Tebow, because that was years ago before the running quarterback was yeah. really yeah. like the thing. Yeah. But I mean, I okay, so look at uh, Terrell Pryor had his opportunity at quarterback, sucked, switched to wide receiver, got an opportunity there too with a couple different teams. Yep. Right. Logan Thomas was came in as a quarterback. Now he's the tight end for the Washington football team. So he's good. And he's good. So, you know, these guys, just because you come into the league as a quarterback or whatever position, if it doesn't work out, doesn't mean you're done. Right. It's how hard are you willing to work to improve yourself, to switch to a different position, to get another shot. And I don't know if he's going to be good or not, but the dude looks checked. Yeah, oh, he's, he's huge. huge. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't look like quarterback Tim Tebow. And I don't no, think he looks anybody. Like... Yeah, I don't think anybody's coming in and saying that like he's going to go to Jacksonville and be Jimmy Graham. No, I don't think you know those aren't the expectations that I don't think that anybody's realistically having. No. But can he be a guy that might you know catch a crucial third and two you know for first down here and there or on the goal line? You have some type of package where yep. you can. He, he he's still going to even though he can he can throw the ball two yards if he's on the goal line you know a little jump, Tebow jump pass type of a thing it's just a wrinkle in the offense that you have yep so I think that's enough talk on Jackson <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah, sorry 
But we, we just like kinda, hey, we're guys, winging it. We got off on a little tangent. Right. You guys know how it is. You just start talking football and see where it takes you. Um, I think we do want to talk about uh, this NFL 100 list that came out, which I'm actually, you know, I didn't even know this list came out. We did a whole episode on this last year about how disrespected yeah. some of the Browns players were. Um, and I haven't looked at this too closely because I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> but I do know that there's one Browns player on this that is just – it's an abomination. So we'll get there. But the, fir- the first Browns player here, we'll just go ahead and read the top ten real quick. So number one, you got Mahomes, which I think is pretty obvious. Um, two is Aaron Donald. Three is Aaron Rodgers. Four is Tom Brady. I mean, t- Tom's still great, but I don't know, man. I he's got to be in the top ten. All he does is win Super Bowls. Travis Kelsey, T.J. Watt, Devontae Adams, Russell Wilson, and then the first Browns player comes in at number nine is Miles Garrett, which I can take. And you know, coming off of last season for Miles. Didn't play a whole lot at the end of the year. I mean, he played in the games, but he wasn't on the field as much as we would like because he had the COVID complications, and he just couldn't get back to 100%. No, and the fact that he's number nine on this list, I'm actually pretty impressed with that because I could have easily seen them having Miles Garrett at 16 or, you know, 50, you know outside the top 10. Yeah, I mean, the only, list. only two defenders that he's behind, Aaron, Don- Aaron Donald and TJ Watt. Yeah. I mean... I'm okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of great defensive players in this league, and they have him third on the defensive side of the ball. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, some other, you know, as we look through this list, um, the Browns ended up having five guys in the top 100. Um, next on our list was Nick Chubb, like at 63. How do you okay, feel about good. That? So let's get it. That is <laughs> that is insane. Wait, so we don't yeah. have anybody so before 63. We have Teller. Or we, I'm sorry, we have Gar- uh, Miles Garrett at nine. Then we jump all the way down to 63. Yeah. Our next one is Nick Chubb, which I think is disrespectful for Nick Chubb. How in the hell is Derrick Henry at 11 and Nick Chubb's at 63? Right? Yeah, so if we go through here, some running backs, I'm just going to start calling out some names. Uh, you got Derrick Henry at 11. You got Dalvin Cook at 19. You got McCaffrey at 21, which, okay, you know, yeah, when he's healthy, he yeah. is legit, you know. Um, but Dalvin Cook is he that I mean, is he that much better than Nick no, Chubb? Nick Chubb's the best running back in football. I think it's almost like a thing where because he plays Kareem Hunt, he gets slighted a little bit. I think that's what all when, that I, is. when I read his, the description of why he was where he was here. Let me let me get to him all the way down to sixty. Yeah, was keep it scrolling. Injuries keep too. Scrolling. Did an injury Another have anything? Guy, to do he's only it? been injured, injured once. And why Blake's doing that? Uh, Alvin Kamara listed above him at thirty seven. Um. He had a big trying year to see last if there year. Was, I think that might have been the last. Oh, and then this one. I don't know what he's doing to stay relevant right now in the yeah. running. Bit. Zeke Elliott at 57 is above Nick Chubb. That one's I mean, crazy. That, are we allowed to say bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just did. Yeah, because, so. right. said that. I mean, he, it says he was limited to 12 games in 2020, so his numbers came down some from the year before. He still rushed for 1,067 yards. The best thing is his yards per rush went from 5.0 to 5.6. That tells you he still showed off his big play ability. So when I first read this, I was like, oh, maybe they're sliding him because he didn't play as many games. But then Zeke is on that list. Dalvin Cook missed time. Dalvin Cook's missed a lot of time. Yeah, over his career. A lot of these play, um, you know, and not even running backs. Michael Thomas was a, Michael Thomas didn't hardly play last year. Yeah, that, <laughs> he that didn't one. score a touchdown last year. Yeah, and, and Miles Garrett was ninth, and he missed games. Yeah, well, so that's a, that's a terrible um, rationale. Yes, and I, I know Derrick Henry like gets all the headlines because they give him the ball fifty times a game. Nick Chubb is better than Derrick Henry. If Nick Chubb had the ball. Given to him as many times as Derrick Henry, he would, he would out yardage him. Yeah, he'd set the Browns. So much. Yeah, he'd set the Browns record for you know rushing yards in a season. Yep. Yeah, imagine if he didn't split carries with Cream Hunt. Right. Yeah, I was. I don't want to go down the longevity argument with you like we got into before the show, but him splitting carries with Cream Hunt, if it's we going to sign help. Nick Chubb and keep them both, I mean that's going to help extend the length of his career that he's able to you know turn off these big rushing performances. Right. I mean, that, that that's just, that's absolutely insane. And then, obvi- I agree. Dis- yeah, disrespect with mm-hmm. job. And then, you know, I'm just going to look at some of these other players on here. Nick Boza missed 14 games last year. He's great. He missed 14 games. Right. Uh, who else is on here that I thought was George Kittle didn't hardly play at all last year? Uh, 
tons of people. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that you have to if you're going to do a list like this, right? I think that you have to go year over year, and you got to like um, and I think that's probably what this guy tried to do, but you can't go year over year and not think that Nick Chubb isn't better than some of these other guys that you put ahead of him. The way I do it too is I look at it is Nick Chubb better at playing running back than so and so is better at playing, you know, wide receiver. That's the way I look at it, how I would rank it. Justin Herbert's at thirty eight. Is Justin Jeez, Herbert really? a better quarterback than Nick Chubb is a running back? No. After one season? I I don't think so. I mean, I, I and some of the other things that we're going to kind of talk about that is they TK have, Metcalf a better wide receiver than Nick Chubb is a running back? I mean, that one's closer. That one's real close. That was clo- I mean, uh, yeah, I agree there with Justin. I don't, but I, I don't think that one's that crazy. But there's probably, there's, you know, there's a handful of wide receivers you probably take. I mean, I'm not, if I'm picking running backs, I'm not picking any other running back in the league over Nick Chubb. Yeah, Even okay, CMC? And- Even McCaffrey? Healthy McCaffrey? Yeah, but now he just had a whole season where he, he couldn't sure, stay yeah, healthy. Three, yeah. yeah. So I think that, okay, if I'm looking at this list and I go and I'm going through, okay, you want to put Derrick Henry above him? Okay. You want to put Derek? Yeah. Well, I'll let you put him above him. All right, now look. Okay, where's our running back? Where's our second running back going? Okay, nineteen. So you're telling me that from Dalvin Cook at nineteen all the way down to sixty three, all those guys have more effect on their team than what Nick Chubb does? I feel like that's where I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to look maybe as much as wh- who was ranked maybe ahead of him, but just like he's not even in. You don't even have him in the ballpark of where you put those other guys at. Like you didn't, you put Dalvin Cook at nine, you put Derrick Henry at eleven. I mean, if Chubb would have been at twenty, okay, you know he's top twenty. No, you got him all the way down in sixty three. So you're saying that that guy is more valuable than everybody else. Where was he last year? I'm gonna. You guys keep talking. Well, this is like I, I don't think this is the NFL's top one hundred either. This is CBS Sports. This right. is a beat writer. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, just yeah. dropped yep. this off. So this is an NFL's official one. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll wait and we'll see when that okay. one. I mean, we did like. Blake said we kind of talked about this before we came on that we did a whole show on this list yeah. last year. Um, I mean, so, Chase uh, Young's at forty; he's a rookie with seven and a half sacks. That that warrants you to be twenty three spots ahead of Nick Chubb. Well, so all I'll say about this too is, I think this works out in the Browns' favor because this is Nick Chubb's deal. Oh, yeah. oh, you want to draft me in the second round? Cool, I'm just going to take the league by storm. Oh, okay, you think I'm underrated? Okay, all I'm going to do is outperform everything. So, yeah, I'm very okay with it. The Zeke Elliott thing too is so this this list I'm just kind of reading down here through some of these and I, I don't know how consistent whoever put this together was in their rationale because they've got let's see he's got Odell Beckham at 81. Yep, that's our next Cleveland. And Brown. then I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead a little nope. bit, but and then there's a there's another guy or so here in between. But then you go all the way down to 96, almost outside the top 100 is Wyatt Teller. And if we're he's the are, best guard are we in the based, league. Exactly. He's the number one graded guard in the league, and there's other guards ahead of him. He's almost outside of this list. He almost didn't even make this list. Mm-hmm. And if what are we basing this off of? Is it, you know, how effective you were last year? Because he should be above Odell because Odell missed Agreed. half the season. Wyatt Teller missed a couple of games and we were lost without him. Wyatt Agreed. Teller, I mean, you can make he is this says he was has emerged as one of the best guards in the league. He, I mean the, the, thing I, the thing I like about PFF is it's it's it takes out opinion. Mm-hmm. It's it's all about the numbers and the facts. He's right. the best one, and, and that's exactly it. Because on Odell's rationale, it says this is more about what I think he can do when he's healthy. Okay, I don't care what you think he can do when he's healthy. <laughs> yeah. I've seen what he can do when he's healthy, but he wasn't. So yeah. we saw what yeah. Wyatt Teller did do last year. Yeah, I, I so Josh kind of touched on eighty one. You got Odell, obviously missed. Almost, you know, half, yeah. half of the season last year um, with the injury, hoping, you know, he's going to come back healthy. I'm still waiting on, you know, I, I you know, I, you see the videos that he's working out. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see, you know, as we get closer, what that timeline is looking, you know, is he ahead of schedule? Hopefully there's no setbacks that pushes it behind schedule. You know what they're actually because nobody's really came out and said, oh, he'll be he's not going to be back till week. Six, you know, nobody's really came out. I, bro, seven. I read that he's starting week one. Right, so like they said it, he's on track. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see that because I mean the videos you see, he looks him, he looks week one ready. Yes, I agree. Um, so you got him at eighty one. Okay, I can you know if he's healthy, is he above that? Yeah, I think you know if he's healthy. Um, and then you got down to eighty six is the first Browns lineman Joel Batonio. Um, listed at 86, and we touched on Teller, 
who is there at 96. Call me crazy, but shouldn't they be flip-flopped? Yep. Yeah, I think I, so. I love Joel Batonio, but Wyatt Teller was better than Joel Batonio. Right, and so I, I mean, I kind of read through this list and then, you know, seeing some articles about it, um, and that was on Dog Pound Daily, and they had a list of three guys that they thought should have been included in the top 100 with these other guys. The round should have had eight guys in this top 100. Do you have those three? So we had what, yeah. Miles? So far we had Miles Garrett, Odell, Nick Chubb, Nick, Nick Chubb, Chubb, Teller, and, and Batonio. Yeah, so see, so um, guys that they, you know, this guy is one of the best centers in the league, J.C. Treader. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, as I was looking through that list, you don't see many centers listed on there. Um, Which is crazy. You think about how how important the center position is to the te- the offense in general, not just the line. Out, they call out the protections and stuff like that. Um, yeah, right. They start the play. I mean, you know, they have to. Not only do they have to start the play, then they have to go through their assignment afterward. Right. So I think that um, he was, you know, listed as being second best in the league behind Corey Lindsley. He left. was on the just missed list. So, okay, you know, so, so he's well, on the just missed list. Yeah. But I think that, okay, you could argue if you're going to put uh, Batonio and you're going to put um, Teller in there, the second best center in the NFL last year and a, and a guy, and the third guy on the top, you know, on the top line in the whole NFL, he's got to be on the list <laughs> over some of these guys, you know, That's right. uh, especially guys that didn't play last year. I get you're looking at their talent and stuff, but penalize them for not playing last year. Here, here's what kind of kills me. So, uh, Baker didn't make this list. Is he on there? No, Baker's not on this list. But Matt Ryan is. So, so uh, Joey Burrow. No, I'm saying was he on the list of? Oh, what they said yes, should have. Yes, yes, on so, the list that should have. He's so, the number one guy that should have been yeah, on the list. Baker that Mayfield listed. doesn't make the top 100, but just on this screen, I'm staring at Kirk Cousins and Joe Burrow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if this was Matt Ryan, if, if Matt Ryan page, ahead of both of them, if this was the Patreon podcast, I'd be dropping some serious f bombs. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have <laughs> to. You'd have to. That is. That is. I mean, come on, Kirk Cousins. I, I I think Kirk Cousins gets a lot of flack. I think he's solid, but come on. And the Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow has like they're looking at. I guess obviously upside. Like you think that's the lo- thing. Career wise, he probably has. More upside than Baker. <sighs> okay, but if you're looking at upside for the future of your career, Tom Brady shouldn't be number four. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's why I don't, there's no consistency with this. So I, I agree with what you said, Zach, about the PFF. Take the emotion and all that opinion out. And just show us the stats. Yeah. For Joe Burris, says, if he had played his entire rookie season, he'd be higher on the list. My prediction, he will be much higher on this list next year. Well, one, he didn't play his full rookie season. Yeah. So that's a moot point. <laughs> And, and so now you're just assuming he's going to be – it's the Justin Herbert thing. Again, I, you know, Justin Herbert was awesome last year, and we think he's going to be good. But Baker was awesome his rookie season too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, So and, and mm-hmm. then the other guy – so we've we've talked about Treader. Um, Conklin was kind of mentioned in the same breath as the Treader in the article I read, mm-hmm. you know, of Conklin. He's just awesome yep. at what he does every single year. Um, but the thir- the second guy before they got to the Baker – point was John Johnson. Yeah. Our free agent yeah. signing. You know, he's ranked stat wise as the third best safety in all of football last year. Not on this list. It's because he's on the Browns. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> honest to God, it's because he's on the Browns. If you had a quarterback last year who was the fourth ranked quarterback in the league the last twelve games of the season or ten games of the season, he would have been top twenty on this list. Mm-hmm. But because he's on the Browns, he doesn't even make the list. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, I th- and the Baker thing, I think that a lot of his is based off of that 2019 season where he wasn't what he was. So he's had, like, a really good season, then it was bad, then he's back to good. So I think, but everybody wants to revert back to that season and not think, Just forget okay, like, yeah. Freddie Kitchens was there too. Yeah, You know, there was a lot of, you know, who was successful in that offense? I don't think any. I think it all comes back to just national media just does not want to buy in on Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Like I think that's all it comes down to. Like they just, it doesn't matter what show you watch. It's well, hey, the Browns are will only go as far as Baker Mayfield can take him. And yeah. so I'd love to, which I couldn't agree with more. We're only right. going to, but I think he can take us pretty far. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, get like, that guy, that second half guy, absolutely. Yeah. So I think it'll be interesting. You know, if 
when another top hundred list comes out, like the NFLs, yeah, and we NFL's, break that down to see how it matches up with this. This is this is in my this is garbage. <laughs> No, I mean, who I wrote thought this? that you'd be interesting. Pete Prisco. Pete Prisco is an idiot. Okay, so <laughs> he, he probably this dude probably gets paid way more to do his show than we get paid to do our show. And yeah. he gets in. He puts, <laughs> this, he puts this garbage <laughs> out. Yeah, well, we had an assistant bring his donuts and orange juice today for the show. Right. Did we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, but, okay. it's. I was just gonna say, like, I'm just because I'm scrolling up through the list. I'm just, you know. 18. So in the top 20, Zach Martin, offensive guard from the Cowboys. He's old now. Well, and, but Treader's at 96? Or not Treader, uh, Teller. Teller. Or Teller, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Teller. That's what I meant. Teller's at 96? Like from 18 to 96, there's that big of a difference between what Zach Martin does for the Cowboys and what Teller does for the Browns. Teller's there's no way. And Teller, Teller's the best guard in the league. I know. Here, here's another thing, too. So another thing I want to talk about is. It's not just us saying this. Marcus Spears of ESPN says the Browns have the best roster in the AFC. Better than the Chiefs, better than the Ravens, better than the Bills. I couldn't agree more. I've been saying it for weeks now. And we only have – we got five guys. I mean, come on. The Browns have the best line in football. Sure. Look at the Bills. What What's their running back room look like? Not great. No. Not great. Chiefs. Yeah. I mean, okay. Clyde yeah. Edwards alaire I think is going to be better this year, but – it's not Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. No, and here, here's the thing. The, Chief, the Chiefs obviously are super good. It Take Mahomes off that team, though, mm-hmm. and what are they? You know, that's, that's a and good point. Cause if you, and that tells me it's not their roster top to bottom that's great. It's just they have a solid roster around what's going to arguably go down as one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Right. He, that elevates that. But, I mean, top to bottom, position to position, the Browns are better than them at – a lot of places. Well, I just look at their wide receiving core. I think this is an interesting thing because, you know, the Browns, we've got good players that, you know, across the board at wide receiver. They have a Tyreek Hill, and it's kind of like, nah, after that. I mean, they have Sammy Watkins as their number two last year, and, you know, he's never. He sucks. Good. Yeah. Okay. He's number one in so, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> is he the number one? He's the number one in Baltimore. Dude, it doesn't matter. Right he's now. number one in Baltimore. Right. No. It, but, he. I mean, you think about what they got, McCole Hardman. And uh, Demarcus Robinson, I think. And it's like. Yeah. And these guys are, if they weren't playing with Patrick Mahomes and Andy exa- Reid's system, yeah. they, they'd barely be on NFL rosters. Right. McCole Hardman is fast. Very yep. fast. And, and they're just hoping that, you know, if anything should happen to Tyreek Hill, at least he can run straight down the field pretty fast. But he's not a great receiver. It's like they got a, a team full of Anthony Schwartzes. Like, yeah. Would you? All right. So would you take McCole Hardman over Rashard Higgins? In which system? No, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just in the Brown system, well, probably no. Because yeah. what Rashard Higgins can do is he. Cre- and we saw it last year. He the dude's just open. He creates yeah. separation. He is not blinding fast, right? But he can get open, right? I'd rather have that than a guy that's just has one route. Those dudes work because Mahomes is so good. Exactly. It's not because they're so good. Right. It's kind of like when the Cavs were going to the playoffs back in the day. Sure. And the sure. role players were Danielle Marshall mm-hmm. and yeah. Damon Jones and Larry Hughes. Those yeah. guys weren't good. But, I mean, LeBron carried Mo Williams to an all-star bid. Yeah. You yeah, know? absolutely. And it's it's the same thing. Mahomes, those guys, McCall Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, those, I mean, they're, they're, they're and, on offense. They're Pat Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hill. Yeah. Yes. And those guys are just so good that the other guys just get brought along for the ride. That's not the way the Browns are very good at the top, but their bottom is better than most other teams bottoms. Yeah. And, and I think with the Kansas city chiefs offense, if you kind of look at it, they have plays designed for Hill and they have plays designed for Kelsey. And then some of their other wide receivers, it's either like just a go route or, it's they're just faster than the defensive back when Patrick Mahomes scrambles around for 15 seconds that the guy can't keep up with them and they end up being wide open. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of how that offense kind of works. He's, I mean, I think in that Super Bowl, what was it that Mahomes ran like 500 yards? I thought, yeah, of just <laughs> escaping in the backfield. And those guys are in I, most games are open by then. You know, Super Bowl didn't work out that way. And there's, um, there's a reason why then McCall Hardman will have a game where he has two touchdowns. And 150 yards, and then for the next month, is six you don't, yards. You, you don't hear from him <laughs> exactly, yep. and it's because you know those fluke plays in the scramble drill type plays like that that he capitalizes on with his speed. But week to week, they're I mean they're they're nothing great. Yeah, no, no, I agree. So I, 
I mean, putting the Browns at the top as far as the roster right now, I, I don't have a problem with that. Neither do I. It's and it's solid. Yeah, especially now that we get the way we fix healthy. the defense. Oh man, and I, you're getting guys healthy back. So not only did you add key players to positions you need, um, kind of the next point that I was going to talk about was our uh, voluntary OTAs that are happening right now. For um, they started last week, they're going through this week. Um, at least is you got Delpit's back on the field. You got Greedy Williams is back on the field. I mean, and those two guys are two of the guys that need this work. They need to, you know, because not everybody. One of the key things, not everybody's reporting. Most of the offense, the starting offense, isn't at the voluntary OTAs. Um, but getting those key guys that need the extra time, I think, is big. That's happening right now. And it's just good to see, like I saw the picture of Greedy and uh, Delpit out yeah. there. It's, like, it's just good to see them out there. Yeah, and, and that picture, are you talking to one where they're like walking out yeah. to the mm-hmm. field? Delpit looks huge. I was <laughs> just going to say that he looks he looks season ready. I yeah, mean, he, I mean, looks, he looks big. Greedy, he dwarfs yeah. Greedy. Which I didn't realize Delpit was that big. Of course, we didn't see him last year, but just seeing that picture, I was like, all right, if if I'm, we're obviously just looking at at a physical image of a guy, but it's like if he comes out here and he plays like we think he can play, like yeah. we drafted him to play. This could be very fun this year. I, yeah, you know how mad you can like turn injuries off. I wish could, I just want to turn injuries off for the season. Yeah, yeah, across the board, everybody's even. No injuries for anybody. Let's just play. Let's yeah. Just go. So, I, so you know, starting offense, most of them haven't been there. We're returning all eleven starters on the offensive side. Defense, we're definitely not doing that. So yeah. they need that extra work as one of the kind of the key takeaways from OTA so far. We talked about Delpit and Greedy getting back. Delpit. Probably going to be a starter when, you know, we throw out the two safeties on the field. We're sometimes going to play with three. So he's looking like he's got that starting, like he's he's got an easier path to a starting spot than Greedy does. Greedy's got a little bit more competition. You got Ward, you got Newsom you brought in, signed Troy Hill. You know, he's going to, he's got a little bit of a fight for the playing time that, you know, Delpit doesn't really have um, in the OTAs. And, and it's just going to be about, where does he come back after that nerve injury? You know, sometimes that takes years to get back to where you were, if you ever do. So, you know, he's got a lot of stuff that he's got to work through, but good thing seeing him back on the field. And then the third takeaway was the praise for JOK right now in yeah, camp. people are saying he's insane. I mean, it was Anthony Walker came out and compared him to Darius I Leonard. I saw that, yes. He compared him to Dar- I mean, he, he's a sliver of what Darius Leonard is. That's a win. Yeah. You know, yeah. and this guy slid because everybody was afraid of some of his health scares, which, you know, you hear the Browns and people talk, they're like, hey, you know, we're not that worried about it. That thing's all, it's all checked out. Yeah. So it's going to be. A lot of people psych themselves out of a potential, like, defensive rookie of the year type player. Yes. Good Future pro bowler, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. You yeah. know, and yeah. I, I saw one of our receivers came out. I forget which one it was. And they were like. Catching passes on Newsom is going to be, be very easy. hard. It's going to be hard. Yeah, I also saw that. I, I, I can't remember what receiver it was. I'll look like, that up. They're like, this I kid's good. That. Yeah, they said he was lo- very, very, very <laughs> like hard. Locked uh, down. Yeah, that's well. That's I mean, that is great news because Newsom, we've talked about it was the one guy that initially we all kind of were like, are you sure? It, but I feel so bad. Yeah. So I was going to reach out to him on Twitter to try to get him to come on the show. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Bad idea. And then I was like, man, if he watches, if he goes back to see what we're about. No, you should. That he way he sees our live reaction. I'm going to feel so bad. Come it defend was, yourself, right? I yeah, mean, it was one of those things where it just was that like I was thinking of other guys and they said this, but man, ever since then. Yeah. I, I'm higher and higher and higher. And, high, and now I love the pick. And talk, I mean? talking to Barry Shuck always helps kind of bring things back to earth and, and kind of ground yourself because. You know, he, he's done the extensive research into that draft process. He was talking new some months ago when we were like, Hey, which defensive end are we going to take? Right. None of them, by the way, but yeah. And I yeah. want to, I want to say that people listen to when we say the Browns have the best roster in the, I don't mean we're the best team. We still have to go out there and prove it. And we got to put, you know, what's on paper onto the field. But I'm just saying preseason on paper, if we're stacking up rosters, I'm putting the Browns they're on the top. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and uh, there was the, another thing with the OTAs, we kind of t- just touched on it. You know, if we if we had to go five biggest players that needed to uh, get in there, get work, and show, you know, what they have going into the season with this new revamped defense, Delpit and uh, Greedy at the top of that list. Yep. Um, but also guys like Jordan Elliott, 
who is right now is he our probably our starting defensive tackle maybe mm. you know on air in, in the interior you know whatever defense we're going to throw out there what system we're going to play because Sheldon Richardson's not there anymore not yet you know, not yet not he, yet I know he's still on the radar yeah. of trying to bring him in but Jordan Elliott a guy that's you know got to make the most out of this time going into next season you know uh, another guy Jacob Phillips you know, taking that next step at the linebacker position. I think that's the guy we keep forgetting about, too, because we're so hype on Walker and yeah. uh, JOK and all these new additions. Phillips was one of the only guys on the defense to impress me last year. Yeah. <laughs> especially later on in the season, he's, he yeah. started getting more playing time. Which is, which is great, especially talking about a rookie in his rookie year. Whenever you see it come on toward the second half of the season, toward the end, it means like they're getting better. Yeah, you know, starting like, to click. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and he was a guy that battled through a knee injury some of last year, Phillip. So, you know, getting him back to 100%, getting him healthy, you know, getting him able to get this work in. Because when you're injured throughout the season, you're not getting that work, and you know, throughout practice during the week because you're just like, okay, I was able to play last Sunday, and I'm going to have to take every day off until the following Sunday to be able to get back out on the field. Um, so I think that I think that you know this is big for him going into this year. Excited to see what he can be with a JOK in there, kind of middle of the field with an Anthony Walker. I think that I think the Browns' defense is going to be exciting. If I'm uh, if I'm Mac Wilson, I'm starting to look for a new place to live, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like Mac Wilson a lot. I like I liked his energy. I like him as a, pl- a person yeah. a lot. And a Cleveland hype guy. Yeah, he loves Cleveland and stuff like that, but uh, I need to see it on the field. I I yeah. would you be. You know, the, the the loving Cleveland, I can I can only ride you so long on that. Yeah, I know. Until I watch you miss your 10th tackle and of the game. When he got drafted too, a couple, you know, 2 years ago whatever it was, and he came out and he was mad that he didn't go to the 5th round. I was like, great, you got the chip on your shoulder, come in and prove it. And he now was okay as a rookie. It, yeah, it wasn't bad, but after last year, it was like, so you were picked in the fifth round. I think he's going right? to be one of those guys that we're going to go, he's going to be just a casualty of a very, very deep depth chart. Yeah, I mean, could be. So, could okay, be. so I threw out a question. So, you know, notable that the Browns, some of their bigger players, especially on the offensive end, haven't, you know, felt the need to go to OTAs. Now, obviously, Everybody's working out on their own. You see all these videos, all that stuff. Okay, so they're doing some stuff on their own. And this is voluntary. It's not like they're skipping camp or anything. I guess they kind of are, but it's all voluntary. Would you rather have everybody show up, or are you good with knowing, oh, hey, they can they can take it and do some stuff on their own, just make sure, uh, what would you want? Well, if you didn't think that the podcast was voluntary, I, you would know that we talked about this last week. Okay, because seventy nine. My biggest thing was the Kansas City Chiefs. Is that is that not the is that not the I'd say the pallbearer for the organizations right now? Yeah, in the NFL, eighty out of their ninety players are there. Yeah, uh, yeah. We talked about. We think it's just because J.C. Treader is the president of the NFLPA, and he says they shouldn't go. So they're basically just like, we don't need to be there. We we said it doesn't really matter. It'd be cool if they were there, but it's not a big deal. You guys see Baker's doing another like little yeah. mini get, get together, together down yeah. in Austin. And that and yeah. that's the thing with with COVID and you know, disappearing on June second. Except, except for <laughs> only in Ohio. Except for <laughs> poor I don't know if you guys are yeah, golf fans, golfer. but yeah. Poor John Rom. He's leading. He's leading, you oh. know, six strokes yesterday, walks off the eighteenth. Could you imagine your feeling you're like, man, just finish the third round, I'm up six. Yeah. I'm At gonna the memorial, win. right? I'm gonna win. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. win million dollars tomorrow. And then they're like, Oh hey, sorry, can you I'd put your mask can you put your mask on? You're positive. It's <laughs> such a dangerous disease that you're able to lead a golf tournament with it <laughs> <laughs> crippling yeah i digress uh but yeah so um with it with covid disappearing you know into the ether it was never a thing now um and c- training camp and stuff is going to be normal the, there's plenty of non-voluntary activities that they're going to be at to to catch up and they, like I said last week, they have the playbook and they, they, they're studying. I guarantee, you know, when they're working out with Baker, they're running Browns, those, routes. those routes, that route tree, um, that kind of stuff. And they, they just played, uh, what, 17, 18 games last year. We're bringing back all 11 starters. Yeah. my The big thing for me, and I mean, just watching the Browns organization over the last 20 years, 
these guys know what they're doing on the football field. I mean, you know how, if you're a professional football player, you know how to play football. What team you've been watching the last 20 years? <laughs> that, what I'm getting at is you have to all be bought into the philosophy. Right, you've got to have that man. camaraderie. Yeah. You've got to, you know, what, what Stefanski was able to do with these guys over Zoom last year to kind of get them yep. all to open up and like interact with one another and feel comfortable with each other. That's the difference on the field when you're out there. It's like, yes, I know how to play this position right now, but I'm going to go out there and give it everything because these guys expect me to. And I, I you know, you, when you believe in each other, you care about each other. It's, it's a real different thing. And we saw that last year. That's oh, the, I agree. Just the fact that I trust Stefanski and his coaching staff and Andrew Barry to have the team ready. So whether it's yeah. now or it's in July, it doesn't matter to me. I trust Stefanski enough that the team's going to be prepared. Yep. Yeah. Whenever, I mean, I just think back when I was younger and stuff, I, I, I'd i be the same way. If guys weren't there at every single voluntary thing, I'm like, oh, they don't, they don't care. They don't care. And the older I get and the more I understand, you know, the business side of things and all that, it's like, yes, they do. They'll be fine. Especially like you said, like you got the right staff in place. You've got the right front office. They're going to have the guys ready. We got the right players on the team. Just calm down and everybody just wait till I know it's tough because everybody <laughs> wants to play full. I want September right now, but and here's the crazy thing is this is their job and it's voluntary. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but if, if my job was like, Hey, if you want to come in, we'll see you here. If not, it's not a problem. I'd be like, it's not a problem. So. <laughs> see you later. I'll see you next week, guys. Yep, I'm not coming in. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't be volunteering my time either. Probably. Uh, so that's just kind of my take on it. But if you want to know more about that, Zach, just go back and watch last week's episode. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah. We even made a dog bite about it. That's right. Uh, you were actually in last week's episode. Right. I, I yeah. know. I, I caught that part. <laughs> That's right. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, I know uh, we got to kind of wrap it up here. We got something. We were a little behind today. We want to th- thank you guys for checking out another episode of The Dogs. Big thank you for just sticking around with us. We kind of... It was like, oh, it's time to go on. What are we going to do? And we just started yeah. talking about But football. it's really exciting because the guests we were supposed to have on today, we'll have on next week, yep. hopefully, right. as long as everything works out. But it, and it's going to be a really good conversation. Yeah. We got uh, Chad from ESPN Radio is going to be with us. Yeah. So make sure you guys tune into that. Um, Chad, sorry we didn't get on today, but we will reschedule. We'll get it figured out next week. Yep. Uh, so thanks for sticking with us today, even though, you know, we might've been rambling a little bit. Hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. Uh, remember you can drop us a voicemail at the dogs podcast.com or vote for the Browns 2021 record at the dogs podcast.com slash schedule. Uh, if you thought Josh looked a little older today, it's cause he just had a birthday. So wish him a happy birthday. He's officially an old man. Uh, we hope everybody's enjoying their summer so far and we'll see you guys all next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast and become an official Dog Pack member and join the dogs.com. Dogs.